America's democracy is in an uncharted and fragile place, according to two Harvard government professors. With the presidential election a little more than a year away, Laura Barone Lopez explores the issue. One of America's two major political parties has turned away from democracy, warned Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Zablat. One key accomplice to the backsliding, they say, are politicians called semi-loyalists, who rather than expel anti-democratic extremists from their party ranks, accept and make room for them. Why is this happening? Their new book, Tyranny of the Minority, concludes that part of the problem lies in the Constitution. They join me now. Professors, thanks so much for joining. Steve, I want to start with you. Can you first establish when you, as someone who is an expert in the collapse of democracies, diagnose that there is now a popular authoritarian movement within the Republican Party? Well, I think there's always been uh, authoritarian factions, authoritarian movements, really within both parties historically. What's really new is that it became a primary winning majority within the Republican Party, effectively took over the Republican Party. So the first sign, of course, was, was Trump's nomination in 2016. And we were, the reason we wrote our first book, How Democracies Die, is we were so concerned about the Republican Party's failure to stop Trump. But um, it's really after Trump was was elected that we saw the um, the, the removal, the the retirement, the disappearance of non-Trumpist elements within the Republican Party, and uh, a, a, a Trumpist majority emerge within the the Republican Party. So after 2016, Daniel, uh, I think that. Some news this week uh, from Senator Mitt Romney, a Republican of Utah, speaks to what you two write about, which was that he is the only member of his party who voted twice to convict uh, former President Donald Trump. And in an Atlantic article out this week, Romney said, a very large portion of my party really doesn't believe in the Constitution. Daniel, do you see Senator Romney's retirement as a sign that rather than weed out the extremists in their party, Republicans are weeding out moderate Republicans like Romney and Liz Cheney? Yes, yes, it's concerning. To be a party committed to democracy, you have to do three very simple things. Number one, you have to accept election losses, win or lose. Number two, you have to not use violence to gain or to hold on to power. And then number three, most critically in some sense for mainstream political parties, is you have to distance yourself and, and be explicit and open about condemning anybody who's an ally of your party that commits any of those first two types of acts. To be a party committed to democracy, in order for democracy to survive, the political parties in a political system have to ascribe to all three of those principles. This applies to parties of the right and of the left. And I think what is so concerning, as Steve described, is that over the last four years, we've seen a process of decay within the Republican Party where uh, all three of those principles are violated, but in particular, most recently, among mainstream members of the Senate, and this is what Mitt Rom Romney's uh, description pr provides us an account of, a violation of that third principle, people who essentially knew what was happening on January 6th and did very little to stop it. Steve. When, we're, when you're talking about semi-loyal, small-D Democrats, who exactly do you see as those, as those actors that are eroding democracy? So semi-loyal Democrats um, are tricky because they look like regular politicians. They look like mainstream politicians. They are, in fact, mainstream politicians. They are in the halls of Congress. They are um, wearing uh, suits. They, they, they look and talk and act like regular small-D Democrats. But the key difference is their willingness to tolerate, to condone, to justify, sometimes to protect anti-democratic extremists. And we've seen throughout history that when mainstream politicians of the left or the right tolerate, condone, uh, protect extremists on the, on the right or the left, democracies get into trouble. And so who are we talking about in, in the Republican Party today? Mainstream Republican Party leaders, Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, leading senators, leading governors. Daniel, you've said that America won't necessarily become nationally like a, a country like Hungary, but that uh, states across America could potentially model the autocracy in Hungary. 
Yeah, so we live in a federal system. We have a system of checks and balances. And so for all of the troubles that are that face American democracy today, one big difference between the United States and a country like Hungary or other countries where democratic backsliding has really established single party rule, we have constraints and there's a strong opposition uh, to, to this these forces. That's certainly the case at the national level. What's, what's so striking, though, because we have a federal system, that there are states in the United States where there are assaults on voting rights taking place, where there's effort, extreme levels of gerrymandering Mandering so that it makes it possible for a party that doesn't win the most votes to actually win control of state uh, legislatures, uh, where uh, courts are then packed at the local at the state level as well. So what we what we see across the United States is increasingly a divide between states where you continue to have voting rights and democracy, and states where democracy is really under assault. Daniel, your your book warns that the Constitution, which is the world's oldest written constitution, uh, is part of the problem, is part of what's imperiling democracy. So what changes do you think need to be made? Some of the things that we discuss in the book and we propose, we have a 15-point set of suggestions in our last chapter, including things such as uh, eliminating the Electoral College, we're the only democracy in the world with an Electoral College, uh, introducing term limits and retirement ages for the Supreme Court, we're the only democracy in the world that doesn't have retirement ages or, uh, or term limits for, for national judges. Um, we also propose some reforms that don't require constitutional reform, such as eliminating or at least weakening the filibuster. The filibuster in the United States sense, we're the only democracy in the world that has such a strong tool of obstruction in one of our chambers of Congress. This, this tool of obstruction blocks very often majority-supported policies, gun control, uh, efforts to address climate change, the minimum wage, things get held up in the, the National Congress, that which frustrate citizens. And so we think there needs to be a kind of a sweeping reform agenda. And one of the things we've discovered looking at other democracies, I should add, is that when constitutional reforms come, they tend to cluster together. Momentum is gained. People get, regain faith in their political system. And we think this is very much part of the American tradition. Mm -hmm. Where we are operating today without this is outside of the American tradition. This is something we need to get back to. Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Zablat of Harvard University, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.